Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Uh, this is a, a bit of a follow-up um, video to the um, Dove bottle video that I posted the other day. Um, one of my subscribers asked if I could uh, just explain the geometry a bit as I did skim over things a little bit quickly um, in the previous video. So I'm just going to roll back through, through this file and uh, explain things. So I'll roll back to the beginning. So at the beginning here I've got a sketch which is front elevational control. Uh, I have a star spline, a uh, curved degree 2, so it's got three, three control vertices which are 1, 2, 3. And then there's some constraints on this, controlling it. So I have an angle constraint at the top. So basically a um oh sorry, that's for that's for this spline here. No, this one doesn't. What this one does have is a constraint because I want to set the widest point on the spline. So I've on my control overall got like an overall uh dimensional uh, polygon here. I put a point on it and then I have made this uh, spline coincident to that point which I'm controlling with dimension like the vertical height of and then I've made a tangent constraint between the spline and the vertical line there. So that's pretty much uh, all the constraints apart from these coincident ones on the end. Uh, that defines that entire spline. And that's keeping it simple, so I return on the curvature. Um, now it's got three CVs, single span curve. Okay, this line here is uh, the control, front elevational control, which I then use to trim back an overbuilt surface. And this um, controls the trend, uh, the edge boundary between the side surface and the front surface where the label goes. Uh, everything else is pretty self-explanatory. And and this, this spline here, because uh, it's got an inflection, as you can see it's got um, curves and then curves back on itself. Uh, it's a degree 4. So it's got 5 CVs and this end it's controlled with, a, with an angle. And then I've dimensioned the control polygon links. Uh, and on this end it comes down and that control polygon segment is horizontal so this is the uh, mirrored across it will be it's normal to the centre line okay then I've created a plane at the top which has got an arc on it the arc is coincident to the external front spline so the front elevation uh, and then the arc is um, coincident to the center plane there. And I've got a front uh, side elevation control, which is made up of there's a line which runs up into a degree three style spline. That style spline, the um. First two uh, control polygon segments are collinear to this line, which um, means that that's a curved continuous connection there because we've got um, if you align one, one, two, three CVs to a line, then it's a G2 connection. Um, I'm not going into depth here with that. You can find out about that elsewhere. Uh, 45 degree, so again, just a angle constraint there. And these control polygon segments are, have an equal length relationship. And then I've got a dimension controlling this point. And down the bottom, I've got an R50 arc that's 7.5 millimeters up from the bottom. And then a couple of dimensions to control that arc. Okay. Um, this sketch here, I've converted entities out of this 
control sketch because I only want the line and the spline. I don't want these other entities. So those are that's a, merely a, a sketch for a converted entity. And now I've created a whoops a plane that is because I want to create a sweep up this previous curve sketch. I want to sweep from here to here. So I've created a plane at the bottom end of that curve and then created my sweep profile on that plane. And in this case uh, it's as simple as a R100 arc that's 60 millimeters wide. And so basically to get the, oh actually I'll sweep it and trim it and then show you what I mean. Okay the sweep is surface sweep. So I've got I've got my center line, which I just showed before, which is the converted entities, and then I've got the sketch profile, uh, follow path for the orientation, and I specified a, 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 a direction vector, which is the right plane, so we are normal to the right plane down the center line, but you could equally just have it on keep normal constant. Okay, and again, what the sketch is, is me just merely converting entities out of a, a sketch here because I want to use a, a trim, so with a trim you can't use a selection manager you have to make a sketch, so I've converted entities uh, just the boundary where I want to trim the surface back to and then just surface trim using that sketch keep selections and I've kept the mid middle part so um, with the sweep section back up here, I basically, I on the bottle I measured a dimension from here over to the other side as if it was mirrored, and then I just, um, I just altered this radius here on the sweep uh, until I got the dimension I wanted, the resulting dimension. Okay, I've mirrored over um, the surface because I want to create a full surface through here rather than building it to the to a plane and then mirroring it over and joining it. I've created a section through this line here, sorry, normal to this line, by creating a plane through that line. So the plane is, first reference is the line, second reference is the front plane, which is perpendicular. And then I have drawn a section here, which is an arc. The arc has a pierce point relationship with the sedge, same on this side, and then it is coincident to the end of this line here, or that line. Okay, so I'm using arcs all the way up the side here, and we're just going to do the same thing again. Another plane, and again the sketch is an arc point relationship on each end and then a coincident relationship with my widest point with the widest point on the product and up here I've created another um, curved created plane through so at the logical point which is the break between these two surfaces where this has gone from extrude to being a compound surface with double double curvature so that is a line, dimension, and then it's perpendicular to that sketch. And again, the plane is uh, normal to the front plane. And the sketch again is pierce point relationship on each end. Or it may be coincident on this one because I've got an actual point to uh, make it coincident to and coincident to this point. Okay, the loft is uh, in my first direction with profiles is all the arcs we just created, including the top, which I made earlier. And then I've got one, two, three guides, uh, which two guides at the edges of the uh, surfaces, and the other one is this uh, curve that's created near the beginning. In the, in the control sketch 
and and I've got no um, tangent constraints in constraints on anything. Okay, because I've overbuilt the surface at the bottom to trim it back, what I've done first is create a style spline again, which is degree three, so four CVs. Um, one, two, three CVs are needed for this curvature con continuous uh, constraint I've got on this end. I can't make them collinear because this is a, a spline. It's not a line, so I can't use that trick I used earlier. So I have to use the curvature continuous constraint. And those, excuse me, those um, segments are equal length. Uh, meaning this this point this one here is resultant and then horizontal because we want this when it mirrors over that's going to be curvature continuous because it's matching itself so it's going to be curvature continuous and it meets uh, and then the dimension set the height and then the other sketch is Degree four spline with an angle on the end here. Um, that's kind of rough, roughly, because there's going to be a crease here. Um, doesn't have to be tangent to this line here. We want to have a crease. Uh, and then I've I've uh, made these control points symmetric around the center line. And then I've created a loft. I'm going to reload this, it does it sometimes. Okay, so loft 7, which is, it's forgotten an edge. So I want normal profile. Um, so these edges here, uh, selected by using Selection Manager. So, you use Selection Manager, you right click Selection Manager, and then I pick this edge here. But I want it to uh, only go to this point here. So, you grab the end point and then you sh move it around here. And when it turns to a dot there next to your cursor, that means it's uh, snapped to that point. And then you go OK. And then repeat the same on the other side Selection Manager, Edge. Grab that end point and move it back. Um, if you're trying to make it snap to a sketch, uh, you have to make your sketches visible. So, yeah. And tangent, and the other end is normal to profile, so we're tangent to the surface. Okay. Then we're going to trim that back with our top plane, with our base plane here, which is top. Looks like I've got a bit of a wiggle in there, but I'm not going to rebuild it and fix it. Okay, then when I've knitted this uh, together, one side up to the crease with the where you've got the front surface and the side surface, and then I've mirrored that over, and then knitted everything together, and in the knit, if you turn on Merge Entities, it will merge uh, surfaces, as you can see there, that, that uh, edge down the middle merge, because uh, that's an extruded face, basically. It's swept along a line, so same as, as an extrude. And then I've created planar surfaces to cap the bottom and top. I'm not going to go into detail on that because it's fairly self-explanatory. And then added the fillets and thickened the part. Yeah, so I hope that explanation was useful. Um, yeah, that's about all there is to it, um, without going, you know, much more granular fashion and building up from scratch. Hope that was useful. Thanks very much. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye.